All right, well, we've already studied. Uh, we've learned how to factor out the greatest common factor. We've learned how to factor out four-term polynomials. We've learned how to factor uh, two-term polynomials, I mean, uh, three-term polynomials when the leading coefficient's one, and also when the leading coefficient's not one. Uh, not one, we use uh, factoring by grouping. When it is one, of course, we can use trial and error. Uh, next, we're going to get into, and last thing, is two-term polynomials. So factoring of binomials. The first thing we're going to talk about is difference of squares. To be able to factor difference of squares, four things have to occur. I think there are four, maybe five. Uh, for starters, we have to have two terms. That's obvious. Uh, the next thing is the first term has to be a perfect square. Uh, the next thing is the second term has to be a perfect square, and there has to be a minus sign in between. If you have that, then you will have difference of squares, and we'll talk about how to factor it. Uh, one thing you need to know is the answer will be a binomial times a binomial. So very similar to what we have done in the past. We'll look at a couple examples here, x squared minus 9. As you can see, uh, we've got two terms. There is no common factor between those two terms. Uh, looking at those two terms, uh, as you can see, we have a... Uh, yeah, the first term is a perfect square. I can take the square root of x squared evenly. I can take the square root of 9 evenly. Uh, there's a minus sign in between, so that meets my checklist. Two terms, first term is a perfect square, second term is a perfect square, minus sign in between. I know I will get a binomial times a binomial. And to get the first term in each of the parentheses, what I'll do is I'll take the first term of my binomial and take the square root of it. The square root of x is x, the square root of 9, of course, being 3. Okay. One thing you do need to know is that your two terms have to be conjugates of each other. Well, this isn't the first time we've talked about conjugates. We talked about that when we were rationalizing the denominator and the denominator was a binomial. What it means to be conjugates is one sign has to be plus and the other sign has to be minus. It doesn't matter if you put x plus 3 times x minus 3 because the, the commutative property of multiplication says it doesn't matter the order. Looking at our next example, 16x to the 4th minus 49y squared z to the 6th. Okay, so again, our checklist, is there a common factor? That is no. Next, we identify how many terms. We have two terms because there's one minus sign. Uh, the only way we know how to factor a binomial right now is if uh, it's difference of squares. So we have two terms. This, I can take the square root of this term. I can take the square root of this term, and there's a minus sign in between. So I know I have difference of squares. So the square root of this term is going to be 4x squared. Remember, uh, whenever you are taking the square root of a variable, it basically uh, what you can do is take your index and divide it into your exponent. So 2 will go into 4 two times. I may not have left myself enough room, but we'll make it work. Uh, so the square root of this term is going to be, actually I'll just make it a little bit bigger. I've got a little bit of time. Uh, the square root of this term is going to be 7yz uh, to the third. Okay, so again, the square root of y squared is y, the square root of 49 is 7, and then the square root of z to the sixth, 2 will go into 6 three times. Uh, you didn't know they need to be conjugates of each other, so that's going to be a positive, and that's going to be a negative. All right, difference of squares. We'll look at a couple of examples here in a second.